In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to play Malusi going into year seven, season three, Brutal Swarm. We're gonna go over things like her loadout. We're gonna go over things like general tips when I bring you into a custom game. And at the very end of the video, I'm gonna bring you into a VOD review of me playing Malusi in a ranked game so that you better know how to play Malusi going into your ranked games. With that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. So like I said, the first part of the video is going to be her loadout section. She has an MP5, which is very, very good, and the Super 90. So the MP5, very, very good SMG on defense. It's on Doc and Brook. 27 damage, 30 bullets with 800 fire rate. Very well-rounded, zero recoil, so I recommend you run the silencer. Angled or vertical grip doesn't really matter. And then she has the one-time sights on that. So very well-rounded. I definitely recommend you run it. Also has the Super 90. Not a very good shotgun, but not too terrible either. It's the shotgun that comes on Frost, if you didn't know, with 35 damage, eight bullets, and overall just kind of being a mid shotgun. I definitely recommend the MP5 over that though. And then she has Ella and Sophia's pistol, the RG15. 38 damage, 15 bullets, very good fire rate, easy to control, well-rounded pistol in my opinion. Also with the recoil changes coming out with the mid-season patch, making every single attachment have 20% more recoil control, it's going to be easier to control than it ever was, so pretty good. And then I recommend you run the laser sight as well. And then her secondary gadgets, we have a bulletproof camera or impacts. If you already know that your teammates have shotguns, impacts, whatever to make rotates, just bring the bulletproof camera. I actually just made a bulletproof camera guide, which I'll put in the top right right here, but it's a very versatile secondary piece of utility that brings a lot of information and a lot of drone denial, so I definitely recommend you pick that up over the impact grenade. That being said, the primary loadout, I would assume, is the MP5, the RG15, and the bulletproof camera. And then of course she has her primary gadget, the Banshee Sonic Defense, or as we like to call it, the Wub Wub. I'm gonna bring you into a custom game and show you all the tips and tricks that I know with that and the basics so that you better know how to play Malusi. Okay, so I brought you on Coastline and this is overall a very good Malusi map because Coastline is a very gun skill heavy map and you can use your Malusi Banshees to make gunfights a lot easier. So for example, let's say we're playing Hookah and Billiards. Um, one thing that you should know is all of the common attacker pushes. So with your Banshees, you want to be putting them all in the common walk-ins where your teammates are going to be playing off of them. What do I mean by that? So a common walk-in is Aqua, a common walk-in is VIP Hallway, and a common walk-in is Hookah slash Cool Vibes, right? So you can put Banshees in all of these to make it a lot harder for attackers to walk into site. And it's an information sound cue so you can actually swing off of them. So if they walk in VIP Hallway, you can put a Banshee here. If they walk into Cool Vibes, you can put a Banshee like right here. If they walk into Hookah, you can put one on the door right there. Or if they walk into Aqua and they're trying to do like the default plant behind the bomb here, you can put a Banshee right here. So, with that being said, you just put them inside of sight or near sight to where anybody that's playing in the objective or you can swing off of them easily, but they also make it a lot harder for attackers to come in, like I just said. So if I'm an attacker and I come in here, right, I'm not able to just shoot it. You don't wanna put it so close to the doorway right here to where they can still be inside of Aqua and just move close to it and shoot it for free, right? Cause that's a waste of a piece of utility. Sure, it's still an audio cue, but you could get that same exact audio cue from right here and then have to waste bulletproof utility to destroy it. Sure, they could walk in, get close to it behind the bomb right here and then shoot it, but then you know, because it's so far into the site that you know that they're actually in the objective to be able to shoot that. And then you have, you know, maybe head holes here, you have a rotate here, you have a guy on pink bar, you have a guy vase that can play smoke and throw smoke grenades over the bomb, and you can heavily deny where they are. Also, the thing with this Malusi gadget right here is the only way that they're safely able to shoot it is from behind the bomb right here, right? So if you're the person playing behind hookah bar and you wide swing here, and you see nobody, you know they're behind the bar and you can easy pre-fire, right? That is why information in the game of Rainbow Six Siege is king. Because the smarter you are with that information, the more playmaking potential you have. So, that being said, Ubisoft added a very helpful thing back in like, I think year five, that made it to where anybody that has a radius of effect with their gadget is displayed after they place it. So, once I place this Malusi gadget down, there'll be a white ring that shows you where the range of effect is. So the range of effect goes right about to this door, right? Which is actually pretty good. Now let's see if it's by the window. It is, and it actually goes outside of the window, right? Because you can see that dome structure. So the only weakness to this Malusi Banshee right here is the fact that they can repel on the window and activate it and shoot it very easily without having to expose themselves to many angles. Obviously, you're in a double window right on the site, so you're already exposing yourself to a lot of angles, but if they wanted to, they could just repel and shoot this for free. Now, if they do do that, then you know as a player, okay, they just destroyed the Banshee here. That probably means they have teammates that are going to push Aqua, or I know that I don't have any info going into Aqua, so I need to be careful about that. Still information, right? 
even you knowing that you don't have information is information to where they are. So still great in terms of giving information. Now let's take a look at this Malusi Banshee right here. This covers the VIP hallway. What people will do is they'll take VIP and they'll cut off all rotates to site, right? So if people want to rotate through vase to this double door, you can kill them. If people want to rotate through the rotate right here, you can kill them from VIP, right? A very strong angle. And then people will make it even better by destroying this wall right here. And now you can get a deep angle into pink bar or onto the actual bar to site like this if anybody has a smoke player playing there. And it's just a very powerful angle to hold. But what's even more powerful is if they're actually in the hallway, then they can take vase like this if they've already like droned pink bar and no one's there. They can take vase like this, kill the vase player, and now they have all cutoffs to every single site and whoever's in site is stuck and whoever out of site is stuck not being able to get back in. Very, very powerful position to hold. If you're solo queuing, I definitely recommend taking VIP. That being said, putting a banshee here negates most of this. Why does it negate most of it? Well, it makes it to where if you know somebody's on this doorway, right? Very common doorway to be on. And you're shooting, you're shooting. They know that you're not in the hallway unless they hit this Malushi banshee, right? So the second that you hit this, you can have a player tucked in this corner. If the wall's closed, you can have a player tucked in vase. And they're able to swing off of the banshee and shoot the players that are in the hallway, right? Same thing I talked about for penthouse where you're able to swing off of your banshees and use them as information, you can do the same thing here. But you know if they haven't activated it, that they're on this doorway and they're holding you, right? So you can get a pretty easy pre-fire as well. Or if you know that they've opened the wall, you can pre-fire that too, or just play it safe in this corner or in vase. But they can go over here and just activate it like this. So what I would recommend doing, don't move it up, right? Because then the people in VIP can just stand right here on the doorway and be able to shoot it. But I would move it more towards the left, right? So maybe like right here, Right, still shootable from a little bit of the wall, but not as much. But as you just saw, the range of effect doesn't cover the VIP door, which means they can't shoot it from inside VIP unless they swing the doorway, which allows you to get a free kill here. So that's what I would personally recommend doing, is just when you're placing your Malusi gadgets down, look at all of the angles that the attackers can activate it from and mitigate it as much as possible so that they have to waste bulletproof utility getting onto it, or if they don't and they swing into it, you can get a free kill. Right? The best part about these banshees is that they're bulletproof and less activated. So um, a good example is let's say they're trying to push up cool vibes. This is a very hard banshee to destroy unless you try to activate it, right? So what players could do is throw a grenade here. They can throw an ash charge here, a Zofia charge here. They can throw a grenade through this vent right here to destroy it, which is why sometimes you'll see ADS is placed right here. But if they're having to waste burn and secondary explosives on a banshee instead of a deployable shield or instead of on players, that is great value out of your Malusi banshees. Not only do they waste that much utility on such an unimportant piece of utility, but it also still gives you information when they destroy it, right? If they destroy it from the vents or they destroy it from downstairs, you know as the person who's playing in vase, typically a smoke player, that they're probably going to push you from sunrise, right? So you can play close here with a shotgun, you can, you know, break this vase, and then you throw your smokes right here so they can't push you, and then you hold your shield, right? Like, there's a lot of options, but you can use the destruction of your own Malusis as information just as you would if they were still alive, which is why they're so good. I actually made tier lists on who I thought would be very good for this season specifically, and I put Malusi very low. I've always thought Malusi was kind of overrated in the sense that she's kind of just three glorified proximity alarms, but the fact that they're bulletproof and you can still use the information of their destruction to further hold the objective, especially on small maps like coastline is why she's so good and that's something that i personally overlooked and it is a mistake on my part but lesson learned malusi is actually a very good operator and if you solo queue and play here you will get more round wins that being said that's pretty much it for the custom game section i want to bring you into a vod review of me playing malusi in rank so that you better know how to play malusi going into your ranked games all right so i'm just going to bring you into me doing a prep base setup with malusi just to show you how i place my malusi gadgets so this is me on bank So this Malusi gadget's good, because if you look at the white line is, ooh, hold on. If you look at where the white line is for this Malusi gadget, it's right where the default plant is, right? So it's right there. So they have to actually walk in the door or in the breach to be able to shoot it, which makes it a lot easier for a smoke player who has a shield and a bomb to be able to kill them or the people on the rotate to be able to kill them. Um, so a pretty good Malusi gadget there. But like I said, just far away enough to where they have to walk in to be able to destroy it. Reinforcing. I think I put a bulletproof camera somewhere here. Wall 
So yeah, I put it on this wall right here next to the rotate. Um, I put it there because one, it denies anybody who has smoke plants, which is very common on that site. So it can see through smokes, it can zap any Flores gadgets that'll come from my Malusis. It can zap any drones, anything like that. Um, so pretty good. Also, I didn't know if we had anybody playing in Garage, so I think I'm trying to put one here. I see our alibis in Garage, so I leave. I put one bottom marble stairs, come and walk in, but we have head holes watching marble stairs that we can play off of for the Malusi gadget, so a very good Banshee there. Um, and then the last one I'm gonna put right next to where I'm reinforcing in case they drop the hatch. So that's my thought process with putting those Malusis there. Again, I put them in places where I knew I would have teammates watching to be able to swing off of my Malusi gadget. So that's the point I'm trying to make here. I had one inside the site for anybody that's playing smoke in sight. Um, I guess in this game it would be our alibi or our maestro. I didn't really pay attention. And then I had one for marble because I noticed we had holes in the marble wall. So that was my thought process doing that. I'm gonna bring you into a second game really quick. Okay, so we ended up losing the round, so I'm doing another basement site setup. Something that you need to realize on defense that you should be doing is anytime that you lose a, like a, a site ever on defense, you need to change up your defense strat, right? Because doing the same thing is just going to make the attackers do the exact same thing that they did to beat you. So always change up something, whether it's where you put your gadgets, what you reinforce, where you put your rotates, what operators you're playing. If you're going to play the same place you just lost, change something up and make a drastic change. It'll just change a little bit of stuff. Um, so that being said, I put the same Malusi in pretty much the same spot. I just put it at the top of the stairs this time. Um, and then I put a bulletproof camera in Garage to watch Garage. I noticed we don't have an alibi anymore, so I don't think he's going to play in Garage, but at least we have a camera watching it. And then my next Malusi goes in the default spot again, just because it's so good. And they didn't push CC last time, so I don't really need to change that. Um, and then I put another one in server room. So I don't want to put it there because they can shoot it from dirt, so I end up putting it on the wall for the walk-in. They just pushed upstairs and garage last round, so I'm putting a CC setup because I think they're probably going to change their attack. They opened that hatch last time, so I'm reinforcing it. And this is the crucial part, right? So as a Malusi, you are a three speed and you have site setup that you don't need to stay on site for. Like Wamai, you have to play in sight and constantly use your gadget, which makes you an anchor. But Malusi's not like that. You can actually roam with her. She's a three speed with good weapons, which also reinforces that roaming idea. So that's what I do. I do my site setup, I reinforce a hatch, and I immediately leave to go roam. That's another thing I didn't talk about in the custom game that you should be doing as Malusi is roaming. That being said, I go for a pretty risky spawn peek. Also, I didn't really destroy the barricade before prep phase ended, so they might have heard that. Pretty risky. No one ended up coming here anyways. Um, I thought I saw someone like quick peek right there, but I was wrong. And then I hear somebody go into the closet door right there. So I see it's an Osa. Trigger discipline is crazy. I kill the ace. I hear someone in my window, kill him. That's two opening picks with Malusi, right? Especially on a map like Bank, where we have Jackal Band and there's a lot of room for solo potential and there's a lot of room for you to roam. Roaming as Malusi is a great idea to do, especially in power positions like Square, where you know they're going to have to take to be able to go to the site. My prediction for them going CC was completely correct as they were trying to take Blue Stairs and they were trying to take Top Square, so I immediately capitalized on that, got two picks, and left. Um, that's pretty much all I do in this round though, but just be thinking about stuff like that not even just with Malusi but on defense in general if they push one side and you lose immediately do a different setup for the other side and then roam heavily or do what you need to do on that side because they're probably going to push there that's exactly what I did it worked out awesomely and yeah that's pretty much it for the VOD review section I couldn't really get any good clips in the time a lot of that I had to record this video like I normally do but it's not really an operator that has a lot to talk about you just put your banshees down in Rome. Very simple operator. It's not something like smoke where there's a lot of complicated things you need to do. Pretty simple operator. With that out of the way, that's pretty much it for the entire video. Don't forget to sub to the channel down below. I am a small critter, so it helps me out a lot. Like the video if you liked it. My name's Alka, and I will see you in the next one. Later.